So it turns out I lied out my ass, and I am in fact doing a clan gen video, finally, thank god, because um, this clan I actually care about, and things have actually happened this year, and also the designs aren't disgustingly ugly, so I actually wanted to draw them. And I didn't actually do a weird screen recording this time, I did a normal speed paint where I recorded my whole setup, rather than like the default built-in things of programs, but yeah, this is Cricket Clan Year 1. So the first cat that we have in Star Clan is the 154 Moon Old Cypress Talon. She was the elder that I selected at the beginning of the game and she died on the first time skip just of old age and was found outside the camp. So she didn't really do anything but she's our first Star Clan cat. The only other Star Clan cat from year one is Gold Jump uh, who's the sister of the current queen Trickleberry. Gold Jump was close with a lot of the clan and is remembered very fondly from what I can find from everyone else's relationship statuses. Uh, but in death, he's already upset about not being around to meet his niece or nephews, and wishes he could still be alive. Uh, otherwise, notably, the original Starclan guide Spruce Bud took pity on her, and uh, so now Gold Jump is the official guide in Starclan 4 Cricket Clan. I'm hoping to see him watching over Trickleberry's kits for some potential prophecy drama, maybe? But um, that hasn't happened so far. The leader of Cricket Clan is the 139 moon old Chirpstar. She became leader already at 127 moons, but despite her old age she's proven to be very determined to lead her clan well and is yet to have lost a single life. I could have sworn she did lose a life at the end of the year but apparently I made that up completely so she's still going strong into year 2 with all of her 9 lives. Chirpstar doesn't have any family in the clan right now but she is really good friends with Golden Ghost and Whirl Iris and she's one of the many cats with a crush on Golden Ghost who seems to be very popular among the clan. She has a slight dislike towards both Fawn Paw and Low Kit, which makes me wonder what problems she could possibly have with them, considering she likes their siblings, and they're really young and they haven't really done anything yet. But overall she's had a pretty quiet year and I'm excited to see if she randomly loses all her lives in year 2 or not. The current deputy is the 107 moon old Rosemary Blink, who is childish, a great mediator, and a talented swimmer. He's the first deputy of Cricket Clan so far, and takes his job very seriously. His statuses usually involve him either assigning patrols, or wondering about what the other cats think of him as deputy. He's one of the few cats with scars so far, which he got from a two-legged trap while out on patrol. He also has a habit of chasing off dogs on patrol, which he has done multiple times this year, and luckily nobody has ended up injured so far. He was close friends with Gold Jump and is currently closest to Amber Slash, Trickleberry, and Blizzard Husk. He has a massive crush on Tufted Dapple, and I really want to see these two together because Tufted Dapple is my favourite cat so far, and I really like deputies being mates with silly warriors. Other than that, he is the mentor of Formpaw, who he seems very comfortable around and is very invested in his training. There are currently two medicine cats, the first being the 146 Moon Old Bright Frond, a compassionate, skilled mediator and great teacher, who joined the clan after being exiled somewhere else for a reason she won't talk about. She's a typical grumpy old lady, but she means well. Her way of showing she cares is just less conventional, as she feels actions speak louder than words, and her clanmates will know she cares for them when she saves them from injuries and illnesses. Despite seeming very cold, Bright Frond is very grateful to Cricket Clan for letting her join and is particularly close with Onyx Spider, a cat who visits her a lot in the Medicine Den and comes on almost every herb gathering patrol with her.
Cricket Clan's other medicine cat is the 119 moon old golden d ghost, who is strict, a trusted advisor and a good teacher. This year has been very busy for Golden Ghost. First he got caught in a two leg trap and almost lost his leg, and then he had a litter of kittens with trickleberry. While the clan itself doesn't really care about the medicine cats having kits rule, Golden Ghost himself is a very strict cat, and breaking a rule like that when you're known for bossing everyone else around for not following the rules has found him in an embarrassing position. While they weren't mates when they had kittens, on the last moon of the year, Golden Ghost and Trickleberry made it official, after going on a lot of herb gathering patrols together, whenever Trickleberry could find someone to babysit the kittens for her. Despite this though, the first and only patrol the two have been on since becoming mates ended up being surprisingly awkward, so I'm not sure if these two are having doubts or if they're just awkward around each other after making it official. Either way, Golden Ghost is not only very embarrassed right now after breaking the Medicine Cat code, but his kits also love to drive him crazy in the Medicine Den while he's trying to work. He loves his kits, but Year One has proven to throw Golden Ghost through some stressful hoops. Other than his mate, Golden Ghost is very close to the warrior's Amber Slash and the deceased warrior Gold Jump, as well as having developed a crush on Blizzard Husk, another cat who has recently been thrust into parenthood. I'm not sure if anything will happen between these two, and Golden Ghost isn't even sure if they like him back, but he's still very in love with Trickleberry either way. The only other thing to know is that towards the warrior Tuff the Dapple, he has romantic-like, platonic-like, and dislike, which I think is really funny, and I'm going to keep an eye on them in year 2 to see what they're up. Tufted Dapple is 89 moons old, charismatic, a prophecy interpreter, and has ghost sight. And I've actually looked at their traits before now, but they definitely fit the idea of them that I have in my head as the clan weirdo. Tufted Dapple is another clan founder, and so not a lot has happened to her. The main interest with her lies in their romantic interests, of which there's a whopping three, two of which have had kits recently, and the other being the deputy, Rosemary Blink. By no means is Tufted Dapple a homewrecker, and their sights are really set on Rosemary Blink when it comes to ever actually having a potential mate, but he doesn't see the harm in floating their way around the clan and throwing around little crushes. While she has no apprentice of her own, they have a lot of trust in Fawnpaw, contrary to how many other cats seem to dislike him for no reason, and they also like and respect both Sunnypaw and Frogpaw. Overall, Tufted Dapple is one of my favourites in the clan right now, even if he hasn't actually done anything of interest. He isn't aware of how much Rosemary Blink likes her, but I really want to see them together in year two. Do you? Whirl Iris is an 88 moon old adventurous warrior who's a great mediator. She likes to keep to herself, so other than being the mother to the current apprentices, Whirl Iris is rarely involved in the going ons of the clan, and is glad her kits are finally out of the nursery so she can go back to spending time alone wandering the forest. She has very little interest in Blizzard Husk, who she had the kits with, but was closest with the deceased Gold Jump and Cypress Talon, and their deaths have pushed her even further into solitude. She loves all of her kits and is closest with Form Poor and she's the one that you'll find the most glaring at anyone that gives her son a funny look. The 83 moon old Blizzard Husk is the other parent to Whirl Iris's kits. They're confident and a beloved kit sitter, which is a trait I've never seen before other than having it be a good or a great kit sitter. So I feel like they've decided to have kits with Whirl Iris because they always wanted to have kits, even if the two were never that involved with each other. They're incredibly close to all of their own children, but also have a good bond with Trickleberry's kits from babysitting them so often. All except for Low Kit, who they find really annoying and who talks about them behind their back apparently, according to the relationships that I've seen in the game. Blizzard Husk has a massive crush on Amber Slash, who is the next cat in the lineup, 
as well as Golden Ghost, and they are best friends with both of these cats, as well as being really close to not to both the leader and the deputy of Cricket Clan. While there isn't a whole lot of romantic like between them and Whirl Iris, this isn't a big deal to either of them, and they don't even really have a lot of platonic like between the two of them, so the game's just decided to have them have kits and we're just rolling with it. The last thing about Blizzard Husk is that they have absolutely no relationship status with Brightfront, and I like to think they just realised that they'd probably be too much for the old cat to handle and leave her alone. Overall, a really fun cat that I gave a fun design to pass on to their kids. Amber Slash is 54 moons, responsible and particularly skilled in building dens. He's probably the cat who's done the least so far. He's one of our founders, as is just the typical warrior. He often wishes that he were deputy, so maybe we'll see a more ambitious streak with him in year two. He's very close to Blizzard Husk, and is also friends with Trickleberry, Chirpstar, and Tufted Dapple, who, like many, Amber Slash has developed a crush on. His brother Onyx Spider found him again after the clan moved to new territory, so he's also been catching up with him a lot this year. Speaking of, Onyx Spider is 42 moons, troublesome, a law keeper, and the mentor to Frogpaw. When the clan was originally driven from their territory and forced to form Cricket Clan, Onyx Spider was lost in the frenzy and taken as a kitty pet. While trapped in his new home, he repeatedly received visions from Star Clan in his dreams and luckily managed to escape and find Cricket Clan, being reunited with his brother Amber Slash. He seems to have little to no relationship with his brother, however, and is hoping that Amber Slash doesn't think less of him for going missing for so long. Other than that, he's closest to Golden Ghost, Trickleberry, and Rosemary Blink, and he has made a habit of following Brightfront around gathering herbs, visiting her in the den with a convenient thorn in his paw that he just needs her to help him with, and trying to get the old cat to relax for once. His apprentice Frogpaw and him share little to no relationship, but it's still early days, so hopefully in year two they can bond a little more. As I've mentioned, for some reason cats don't really like Formpaw. He's seven moons old, childish, and has an active imagination. Despite having the deputy as a mentor, Formpaw doesn't feel particularly special, which his siblings are a little bit jealous of. He's closer to Sunnypaw than Frogpaw, but doesn't feel as close to either of his siblings as he realises he probably should. He is, however, close with his parents, finding slightly more comfort in Whirl Iris, who she often confides in. She's feeling a little lost this year, and hopefully year two is a little nicer to him, and he's met with less just mental glares when out and about in camp. For all the World Wizard kits, I randomised which traits they inherit, and for Form Poor, he got his mother's tufted ears and his father's long tail, as you can see in his art. Sunny Paw is a charismatic Tom with an active imagination like his brother Formpaw, and is the apprentice of their mother, Whirl Iris. Sunny Paw inherited his father's large ears, but his mother's ear tufts, square cheek fluff, and stumpier tail. While out on patrol, Sunny Paw was caught in the middle of a scuffle between his clanmates and a coyote over its scavenged meal, where Sunny Paw suffered a nasty bite. Luckily, however, the wound healed with little complications, and he missed out on very little training. While charismatic, Sonny Paul knows when to talk and is more on the nervous side, taking a supporting role in the clan for now. He's very close with his father Blizzard Husk, but is more mellow, much like his mother Whirl Iris. Beside his parents, Sonny Paul feels close to both of his siblings and is excited for them to become warriors together in year two. Frogpaw is a fierce young Tom, though he also has the trait of being quick to make peace. This makes for a very interesting cat, as Frogpaw is both very passionate when it comes to what he believes is right, but also believes it's very important to hold his tongue and try not to let anything escalate into a proper argument. He is Onyx Spider's apprentice, and the Tom's more relaxed take on life is very refreshing to Frogpaw. He loves both of his parents, who dote on him even as an apprentice, and feels closest to his brother Sunnypaw, as Formpaw's louder personality is a little much for Frogpaw sometimes. The 100 Moon Old Trickleberry is the sister of the deceased Gold Jump. 
She's insecure, a great climber, and a learner of lore, which I feel she gets from her sister visiting her and giving her the inside scoop from Starclimb. Chickleberry is currently in the nursery with her three kits, Robin Kit, Low Kit, and Bear Kit, though they're all five moons old and they're about to become apprentices. She hasn't paid much mind to the medicine cat Golden Ghost until they had kits after a fling, where she immediately fell head over heels for him and found a way to tag along any time he went out collecting herbs. The two have officially become mates as of the last moon of this year, but Trickleberry is nervous at the change in Tom's demeanour as he's become a lot more awkward on patrols and she hopes she isn't annoying him now that they're together. The first of their kits is Low Kit, a daydreamer and a careful listener. As all of the kits are five moons, the nursery is very cramped, but Low Kit is the only kit who isn't rushing to leave her mother. She's closest to her parents and siblings, but also has a slowly forming admiration for the apprentice form poor. Other than that, she seems to dislike Blizzard Husk a little, so maybe she can tell that her father has a little crush on the Tom and isn't too happy about it. Robin Kit is daring, constantly climbing, and loves stories. I didn't actually realise this so I didn't draw it properly, but the um, dark front paw that you can see on him is actually meant to be a frostbite scar. Uh, it was the same colour as his spots in the sprite, so I didn't know this at all and I've only just realised. Robin Kit is close to his mother, but really admires his father Golden Ghost. He's also taken a liking to the apprentice Sunnypaw, but other than that there's not much going on for him so far. One thing I will say is that I'm kind of annoyed that the game for making him almost identical to Frogpaw, because they're not related, and I also can't make them cousins without completely destroying the chance of anyone in this new generation becoming mates. But maybe I'll figure out a reason for that later on in year 2. The clan's last kit and member, Bear Kit, is lonesome and likes to splash in puddles, often dragging dirt around the nursery from the muddy puddle water they like to roll around in. Bear Kit is closest to Golden Ghost, and is the kit who is most likely to be found peering around their father's legs at all the herbs he's gathered and is organising. They also have slight likes towards Amber Slash and Blizzard Husk, who are both known to visit the nursery from time to time. Blizzard Husk more when his kits were still below six moons, but he does like to pop in every once in a while. So that is year one of Cricket Clan. I'm hoping that I can stick to this and make a year two, but um, I might end up having to draw more cats together interacting rather than just the normal illusions like this time, because I think I'm going to get tired of like just drawing the same thing of just a cat standing on its own for a while. But hopefully I can get year two up and ready. Uh, let me know any of your thoughts, any of the uh, warrior names you think the apprentices should have, anything like that. Um, I will try and upload again soon. I'm going to try and post some more normal speed paints like the one that I posted last night that if you haven't seen is up on my channel. But yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you in year two.